All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. This is MetDC Dependent. I am MetDC Dependent. Um, I'm going to be doing a video of the second mission of the American campaign, the Big Red One campaign, where I take the role of uh, 3rd Brigade, 1st uh, Infantry Division forward, which is the uh, division in, or the brigade of the 1st uh, Infantry Division uh, which was deployed in Europe in 1989. Cold War's gone hot. This is the second mission. Uh, after uh, Charlie Troop, 1-4 Cavalry's uh, you know, defense of Westfalen, they've bounced back, uh, withdrawn, uh, withdrawn as the night fell, and fallen back toward Geppingen. The river crossings at Geppingen are essential and vital. Uh, they've, fa they've fallen in with uh, the 1st Battalion of the, uh, you know, 3rd Brigade to really be in combat strength and organized, uh, that'd be 4 16 Infantry, so 4th Battalion, 16th Infantry. Uh, they've got a, they're really more of a, a task force because they have a company of armor assigned to them, so we've got some Abramses. Uh, we also have another company of Abramses from the 3rd of the 34th, uh, that's Alpha Company, rolling in to assist us in a couple hours. It's 4 a.m. on day four of the war. Uh, if you know where Gepingen is, uh, it's pretty far behind the line, so the Soviets have made quite a push. We are facing uh, significant resistance from the enemy. I'm going to go over my uh, uh, positions already. I'll go quickly over like what I perceive the enemy battle plan to be, although it does change, uh, and the, the AI is pretty good at reacting, although it does make mistakes like last time piling the SPGs into... Uh, into the teeth of our Abramses and Bradleys. So uh, really quickly, this little town with the stream coming out of it right here, uh, what's it called? Uh, Vashenbiren. Uh, I'm going to have Bravo Company 416 push up and reinforce that. Because it's kind of in a dip right here, they can have at least a little bit of uh, terrain cover and hold onto this, prevent them from rolling down this road. Because if you zoom out, uh, if, assuming the enemy ob enemy's objectives are these river crossings, which is pretty safe assumption, uh, they're going to want to use this open space in the B-297 to rush as many guys down there as possible. Uh, and through here, you know, we can, I'm going to put the uh, armor from two, uh, from Charlie 334, uh, who's attached to 416. Um, I'm going to put them along this ridge line, uh, and some of these, would, hopefully we'll be able to have good overwatch, uh, as well as some ITO carriers, some M901s. But the enemy does have aviation assets, so you know, it's going to be interesting to try and keep the Abrams from getting popped by the, uh, by the, uh, like, Heinz. Uh, we do have organic artillery at this point. Alpha Battery 2-5 field artillery is here. Thank God. we got some, some, they're not Paladins yet, but they're M M109s. Uh, um, they've got fast gam rounds. They're loaded up with fast gam rounds. Um, if I can pull them up, which is a, a field artillery scatterable minefield. Um, so that's super useful when we're pre stretched pretty thin like we are. We can kind of try to bottle the enemy up, slow them down, restrict their avenues of approach. Uh, and that way we can make sure that our guys are there, either A, ready for them, or B, uh, uh, you know, we interdict them and kind of screw them up. Right now, across the whole battery, they got 128 HE rounds, which isn't great. 112 improved conventional munitions, which are uh, uh, like airburst smart uh you know, artillery shells that'll that kill tanks like motherfuckers. Uh, and then 256 fast cam rounds, which are the uh, the field artillery scatterable minefields. They do need 40 rounds before the minefield is considered to be set up. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to try and shorten this. I thought I was completely ready, but I'm glad I caught this. So they're going to be ripping these rounds off, but it's very important that I have them up and ready for counter battery uh, ASAP because I have a feeling the enemy is going to try and. Uh, use their artillery. Um, with them, we also got the Fisters, uh, which are these guys in their uh, Fist V. A fist, the Fist V, the M981, is an awesome vehicle. It's got uh, a big thermal sight and laser rangefinder, uh, and at this point, it might have a, a prototype GPS, but it's definitely got an inertial navigation system, so it, it's able to very quickly and accurately call in uh, corrections to artillery fire. It basically is just a massive force multiplier. It's like some some dudes who are real good at calling for fire, and that's all their job. They are awesome. If you look at the sensors, uh, 
yeah, that laser rangefinder, optical gun sight, with zoom, can detect at 10 kilometers. Uh, then they got a low magnification, uh, so like a uh, uh, visible spectrum on the periscope, it seems. All of these acronyms have, have uh, uh, names and numbers. And also is the thermal imager, which can detect enemy units at eight kilometers. So basically, great best practice for using them is putting them up on a, a, a ridge line, uh, letting them just sit there and be silent like scouts and just call in the hate because they are directly assigned to 2-5 field artillery, which is down here. And so they can call to the, uh, the local like fire control center and correct for fire on these, uh, on these M109s, uh, and they can really rip on them. Uh, I'm here on the battlefield, in theory, quote unquote. Um, I'm over here. Here's my brigade headquarters. I'm actually going to move it over a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to keep them moving as best I can. If they get hit by artillery, that'll really mess us up because our command cycle is always already at 32 minutes between turns. So the enemy's got a faster command cycle than us. Hopefully we can interdict them and start to draw that one out. Uh, so I, this will be this video is probably just going to be like uh, showing the setup of my battle plan in the first turn. So we got Charlie 334 over here uh, and some surface to air missile assets and, and Vulcans and stuff. Uh, I think they need to look at Vulcans. They're a little bit ineffective right now. You know, four Vulcans ripping at 500 meters from behind and missing completely. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I also think when they realize we've got tanks on this road, if they're coming down here, which all, all intel says they're gonna, uh, you know, they're gonna be pushing this way. Um, they're gonna you know, not want to advance through this open field, so they're going to push along the K-3273 and the K-1408 down here, come through this town. So this this looks like a real nice spot for, you know, enfilade fires and everything like that. So I'm going to put, uh, what was it, Alpha Company? Or Bravo Company. Yeah, Bravo Company's going there. Alpha Company, 416. It's going to set up in here, uh, and I'm going to put some, some I got some ITO vehicles going with them and some stingers because, you know, they're going to be I feel like they'll shift their helos over that way. Um, along here, looking at the road, doing some map reconnaissance, if they want to shift from over here along this road, they're either going to have to climb these hills, which is going to be hard and take a while, or they're going to have to shift them all the way along this, this bigger road along the river over to Schorndorf. I don't think that'll be likely, or I don't think it'll be quick. So I do have these scouts who can kind of, they kind of have a little bit of field of view. You can check the field of view on here and they see, they can kind of see if people are moving around in this area as it gets a little bit brighter because uh, it is dawn over, and it's overcast, although visibility does seem high. Uh, you know, we, they might be able to see a little bit better over there, but I'm probably just going to drop some minefields on here, some field artillery scattered minefields on along here. Then if vehicles start blowing up along it, then we'll know if they're, they're trying to roll down there. Um, and I'm, I am relying on the, uh, the chemical contamination, the persistent chemical warfare, like, contamination along this road. Um, although, you know, I do have the scouts here. Um, speaking of the scouts, uh, well, my, my thinking regarding this road is if they're not coming down the K-1408 and they are coming down this one, I can shift, the, I can shift uh, Alpha Company over relatively easily. If they're coming down both, then I'm going to be a little bit more screwed, but I don't have enough forces to defend everything. Um, so speaking of the scouts, uh, Charlie, Troop, 1-4 Cav, uh, they are going to be kind of my left side security. I see this road. Uh, I see the victory point over here, which is obviously kind of a symbol, but I see this road on the left coming from Scharndorf, and I see a bunch of river crossings down here that are pretty much unprotected. My main threat Access is going to be coming down the B297. I really think they're going to try and utilize this big road to roll down in here and take as much as they can. Um, but that secondary threat is along here. And so the, the, the cab brings a fair amount of firepower considering their, uh, their relatively small size and small density. So I can't really rely on them to hold ground in the same sort of, you know, dig in deep and, and fucking, you know, hold your ground, uh, to the same extent as like an infantry uh, company. But what I can do is I can let them be A, uh, a speed bump, but also B, 
tie them down and beat the piss out of them while the enemy has to fight their way through two field artillery scatterable minefields. So within the first 10 minutes, uh, there should be two minefields right here. So if, as they try to push up, they're going to start getting popped along these. And then you'll have uh, four brads with the cap scouts and then uh, seven tanks and then another three brads, but I don't think they can see through here. Um, should be able to, uh, uh, as well as the mortars, the calves mortars. These 120s should be able to help out. But um, really should be able to beat up on them and I can use the pallet, or not the paladins, the M109s uh, to smack these guys in the, in the minefields as well. Um, you know, a general rule of thumb is you really, it is essential to have, uh, you know, any obstacle or, you know, fortification. It needs to be monitored. It needs to be observed, first of all, so that you can, you know, know where the enemy's coming through and know where the enemy is. But second of all, like, an obstacle on its own is just, you know, a fence for somebody to hop over or a uh, barbed wire for somebody to crawl under um, or a minefield for somebody to defuse. An observed minefield where the enemy has to bust through it using engineer assets while they're under fire and being shelled, that is a whole different matter entirely. Um, you know, you can use those scatterable minefields to delay somebody, but if they're not under fire, it's a, it's... You know they're they're pretty likely to break through without any trouble or without much trouble and relatively quickly. Uh, last but not least, I have Delta Company, uh, 416 cat or 416 infantry, um, down here as kind of my mobile reserve. Uh, I have played this mission before. Um, it was a little while back before the update, I believe, um, and I put them on the left with uh, the Cav. I split them, but. Uh, in the do in the process, I had a lot of my tanks over here in Charlie get kind of overrun when they pushed guys uh, this way and down this road and everything. So I am just thinking, well, I can I can use them as a mobile reserve, kind of depending on where the enemy's the heaviest. You know, uh, these guys are, have good access to to storm up here. If I if I start seeing enemy Vix coming along this way, you know, using these these hills or whatever, I can push them up here and try and have them fight like a reverse slope defense. Or if uh, you know, they're really, you know, they're, they're, they're stomping these guys. They blast through there with, you know, four battalions. I can at least try to push them over along this road, have them set up in the town, and just have them, you know, uh, give give the bad guys trouble. When uh, Alpha Company uh, 334, I don't know if, I don't know if they're Alpha Troop. It's just, uh, when, when Alpha 334 arrives with uh, a whole company of Abramses, and some scouts, um, I'll be able to flex them as well. So if, if we're really facing some pressure right here, the Abramses can roll up to this this opposite side of the valley and regain fire superiority, or they can roll up here and serve as like a block along here or a block along here. You know, it's kind of, uh, it gives me some flexibility. Uh, also roll, that's gonna be rolling in shortly is, uh, yeah, they're, they're how many minutes away? Yeah. A little under two hours away. Uh, we have Bravo Battery, 2-5 Field Artillery. They're going to be rolling in, and I'm also going to get Bravo's Fisters, which is going to be awesome. More of those guys, the better. Fisters are great. Um, so, uh, why are these guys yellow? When they're yellow over here, that means they have an issue. Um, what's their issue? They're low morale. Are they also far away? Uh, unit log staff alerts yeah they're not too far away from the HQ I think it's just their morale's too low okay um, that, that'll come back because they start seeing bad guys get popped um, I gotta keep focus on moving my artillery because they're we're, we're facing a lot so Let's roll into the intel portion, and then I think I'll be able to get one uh, one turn off. Uh, I am I'm doing this on my lunch break because I figured doing it in small chunks is better. It makes it a lot quicker to upload and uh, and process and everything like that. And uh, with the release coming on Steam, I figure people will appreciate having more videos out there uh, to help them make their decisions. So regarding the intel page, which is the most important. Uh, it says the enemy will be the enemy will be seeking maximum speed and likely will travel in force along open areas. 
as a BTR regiment, so multiple battalions, they will probably use their speed to try to ferry large numbers of infantry into any crack they can find, while tanks shoot anything that engages them. Their numbers will make them dangerous in close combat. If you defend forward, then you can whittle down their, their formations before decisively engaging them in close. Mind the artillery. The Soviets have likely brought a division artillery group and air support with them. Be especially wary of attack helicopters, which quick, quick strike spotted behind them. So, interesting. Helos, heavy artillery. We gotta keep the paladins mobile. We gotta, you know, work them, work them over. Uh, we don't have any threats or anything yet. We'll see all that stuff coming up. Uh, the EW report is low right now, thankfully. Weather forecast likely to still be overcast. Might get a little bit of rain. Um, yeah. All right. And uh, nobody has any uh, caveats or any other bullshit that iron people say. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be doing this. Uh, look at other things. You know, you can see the uh, the map overlay kind of showing where my guys are generally. Uh, it gets a little bit confusing with things like this. Um, the only the only unit I have that's emitting, you know, radar and radio like that's detectable is the are the uh, Balkans. Um, so, yeah. All right. Let's get rolling. These guys got all got to roll up to their fighting positions. Uh, and I'm going to try and hopefully make it there before the bad guys. 4 a.m., day four. Okay. They are dropping preparatory barrages, and I'm dropping some minefields. Scouts have moved up, and we see something. Okay, counter-battery artillery has already identified potential... Counter-battery artillery radars have already identified a potential enemy artillery unit over there. As soon as my M109s finish with their minefields, I want to have them try and shoot at that. It looks like probably 122s, but... If we can gain artillery superiority now, we can we'll really have an advantage going forward. Oh, something I didn't mention in the setup, but that's extremely important in setting up for these games, is uh, I played with the infantry SOPs. So the SOPs determine what actions units will take, you know, in contact with an enemy, on taking losses in uh, the case enemies get too close to them, you know, what their standoff range is going to be or what their, like, optimal firing range is going to be. Do they engage at maximum range or do they engage at minimum range, etc. The Abramses are engaging at 4,000... 4 kilometers, which is... Sure, go for it, guys. Uh, but one of the things I did with the infantry, that's a, that's kind of essential you do with your infantry. Uh is you have to make sure that they are set in a way, their SOP is set in a way that you want it to be. So for example, uh, you, if your infantry sit there and dig in for an hour, you don't want them evacuating, like relocating as soon as they take a loss to say mortars. You know, if you spent five hours digging a hole, let's say in the worst case scenario, yeah, you spent, you, know, you spent two hours digging a hole to lay down in, and you set up your sector sketches, you've, uh, you know, made sure that all the machine guns and everything have interlocking fields of fire, here comes some pines. You know, it'd be pretty stupid to just say, alright, pick it up, pack it up, uh, we're going home, we're moving, because, uh, you know, Jimmy got a cut on his leg from some shrapnel. But unfortunately, with the relocate after taking any losses, that's essentially what you do. Or the automated standoff distance, like the, the, the standoff distance of like two, two hexes or whatever, one hex, you know, the infantry's job is to close with and engage the enemy. Uh, Abramses are taking some fire from that hind. If the infantry's job is to close with and engage the enemy, which it is, you, you want them to, oh, they're pushing up that way first. You want them to hang tight in their fighting holes, in their fighting positions, in their ranger graves. Like, 
when the enemy's close, you know? Determined infantry is stupid difficult to dig out of a hole or dig out of a city or a forest, like, when they don't want to be dug out. Good job, guys. All right. Scout unit done. Enemy scouts popping up on the left. Abrams is engaging, but not killing. The infantry's pushing up. I2 is doing work. Um, so I, what I set them to is preferred standoff distance for the infantry as zero hexes. So the enemy will have to get in close to dig them out. Yeah, fuck you guys. Uh, and then I made it so that they would not relocate, which is maybe a bit hasty. Don't get me wrong. Uh, come on, guys. There's three Heinz right there. They're being engaged by my Stinger teams, some of my Stinger teams. I guess they're below the horizon because I have, I have two Stinger teams here and here, and they're not engaging them. And the, the, the Vulcan's over there. I need to work that out. Right. Got a BTR, although they're taking some missiles. Uh, Bravo Company's encountering a traffic jam, it seems. Uh, yeah. Alright. So they're engaging my scouts. It looks like just an ATGM team or something, maybe a, a Strala team. Alright. Well, that covers setup and uh, the first turn of the first mission. So far the enemies pushed uh, some scouts down the B-297 like I was worried they would and some scouts down the K-1450 which I hadn't seen before I don't think. Uh, the Heinz rolled up, took some stingers and actually decided wasn't worth it right now. I am going to not that, I am going to change their orders really quick because I don't want them resting and resupplying for very long. Um, you know, it's important to give guys little little rests, so 10 minutes isn't that big a deal. They'll be back up to, uh, they're at 25% supply right now, they'll be at 63% supply. Um, but it's, it's very important to me that uh, that I, I don't have all of these stingers running dry at the same time. And the same thing with the Abrams. It's, uh, it's really important to like run supplies to them frequently. Uh, if you end up trying to do it, uh, you know, have, have them do it at the same time, well, then you, everybody's going to be at the same level of ammo uh, or missiles or whatever. So I'm going to go in the intel screen. Remember, we saw that artillery. Uh, before I close up on you guys, before I forget, um, down here we have... At 0415, we detected contact 110, radar only, heading out up here. I think that's worth a barrage. Um, so I'm going to call in. Uh, ICM tends to do pretty good against uh, artillery. I think it was here, but I don't want to do it in the wrong spot. Uh, radar only. Oops. Radar only. Yep, right here. So I'm gonna drop that on them, and then hopefully the M109s scoot after this. And have them go on to back onto counter battery. Apply. All right. So, as of right now, uh, not a lot happened, but uh, thank you for your patience. Hopefully this is a lot easier to uh, upload, and it'll get people coming back. Um, yeah, uh, this is MetTC dependent. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, you know, hopefully this mission doesn't take uh, uh, too many more uh, episodes, but I really appreciate it. Uh, have a good time. Have a good uh, day, everybody.